More than 400 square kilometers and 29 settlements have been liberated in Kherson region in less than a week. The official liberation of Luhansk region has only started yesterday, but Ukraine is already about to encircle the first major city. Now back to Kherson, where Ukraine is making a significant progress and one third of this region is expected to be liberated very soon. And finally, today is the world revealed its nuclear plans to humanity. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and talk about the liberation of Lugansk region day two. And first of all, as you can see in this video, this is the way the local residents of Bogoslavka received their Ukrainian liberators. And going a little bit to the south, we can see Ukrainian soldiers installing a Ukrainian flag in Borova. And right now you are witnessing the changes in the map in the east for the last 48 hours. And if you remember from my previous video, one of the key cities in this area is Svatovia, which is pretty much one of the main resupply directions for Russians in Severodonetsk and Lysychansk. And as you can see, Ukraine is pretty much just a few kilometers away from taking the control over this road. What's even more interesting is that previously Ukrainians were approaching Svatovia mainly from the southwest, but in the last 24 hours they also started to push from the northwest. And I would say that their goal is pretty clear, which is to encircle this city from both sides. And so, what about Russians? What are their main directions for a retreat? First of all, we already figured that Ukraine is very close to take the control over the road between Svatovia and Lysychansk, which basically means that this option to retreat will expire very soon. Second, retreating to the north also doesn't make much sense, because in this case, Russians will be better basically evacuating to the territory of Russia and there is not many major cities in this area. Which leaves us with only one option to retreat, which is to go to Starobilsk. Which means that as soon as Svatovia is inevitably retaken, this area I'm highlighting right now in blue, in my personal assumption, can be easily and pretty quickly liberated by Ukrainians. Alright, and before we talk about, uh, I don't even have words for this, but truly speechless counteroffensive of Ukraine in the south, allow me to quickly show you just six footages from Ukraine. And while I'm going there, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you like this style of daily updating. Alright, so our first video comes to us from Belgorod. And once again, the local residents were able to see this hard to explain lights in the sky. So just please uh, let me know in the comments what do you think it is. Then we go to Zaporozhye. And as you can see from uh, this video, Russians were shelling literally residential buildings. Several explosions were heard throughout the night. But in the morning, Russians continued to shell the city. And once again, the target was residential buildings. We even have this video from one of the apartments right after the explosions. Then we go to Mykolaiv, where locals were able to hear some explosions as well. And finally, here is a video from Odessa, which shows us the Ukrainian air defense system intercepting Iranian kamikaze drones. And by the way, right here I have a GoPro video of Ukrainians being ambushed by Russian forces. And it shows how disastrous close combat can get. And if you want to see this full video in addition to all the other footage from today's episode, please consider checking my Patreon. The proceeds will be donated to Ukraine and you can find all the useful links down below. Alright, and now as promised, let's talk about extremely rapid counteroffensive of Ukraine in the south. And our first video comes to us from Trifonivka and as you can see, this settlement has been recently liberated liberated by Ukrainians. And on this map we can see the progress of Ukrainian counteroffensive in the last 48 hours. In my previous episodes I was talking about Ukraine attempting to split Kherson region in three parts. And so right now it became pretty clear that Ukraine decided to focus on liberating its eastern part first. And right now let's talk about what they are planning to do next and how they are planning to achieve it. At this very moment every single day there is 
more and more evidence that one of the next key cities in this area will be Bereslav. And so far, it looks like that Ukraine will try to approach this city both from the northwest and northeast. But there is a significant water obstacle on their way in the northeast, which will most likely slow them down. But don't worry, <laughs> it will not stop them. And advancing from the northwest might also be a little bit challenging, because they still have Russians to the west. But at the same time, Ukrainians are prepared for longer battles, because they can resupply themselves from the north. While the same idea cannot be applied to Russians. Because if you remember, all the major bridges are either partially or completely destroyed. Which means that sooner or later, Russian soldiers will be exhausted and Ukraine will finalize the liberation of one third of her son. And it is my honest assumption that as soon as this area is liberated, Ukrainians will start advancing towards her son city. And they will have a massive support from Mikolaev's side, which gives Ukrainians an exponentially high chances to succeed. All the maps I was drawing today will be available for free in my Discord. Alright, and before I give you bullet points of other major events that happened today, Please let me show you some Russian ridiculousness. First of all, Russia indeed became the biggest weapon sponsor to Ukraine. For example, Russia abandoned 421 tanks, which were later captured by Ukrainians. And just for comparison reasons, Ukraine only received 320 tanks from the West. Then we have this weather forecast on Russian state TV channels, which was already showing these occupied territories of Ukraine as a part of Russia. And while while Ukraine is actually busy with liberating its own territories, Russia spends its time to calculate the probability of rain in Kherson. And then we have the statement by Russian infiltrator Vladimir Salda, who is saying that Ukraine will not be able to take Kherson. And well, if he says this, this must be true. So I guess it's time for Ukraine to pack their things and go home. Literally. Okay, now super quick about the bullet points of other major events from today. First of all, Elon Musk continues its ridiculous Russian propaganda on Twitter. And this time he mentioned that the majority of people living in the east of Ukraine are Russians and therefore they prefer to become Russians. I mean, come on Elon, <laughs> just leave it and go pump your Dogecoin, you are better than this anyways. Second news is that we have this statement by Zelensky, who is urging to do a preventative strike against Russia. He is saying that Ukraine and the rest of the world does not need to wait until Russia uses nuclear weapons, they need to prevent it. In response to that, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia made a statement that the West is escalating the nuclear catastrophe. And I mean, yeah, right. It's not like that Russia ever threatened with nukes. And then the US released their nuclear plan as well, which you can see right here. And briefly, in case Russia decides to use their nuclear weapons, America will respond by doing the same, either against Moscow, front lines of Russian forces, Crimea or the Black Sea Navy. And I have a special episode about whether Putin will press the button or not and it will be uploaded tomorrow, so please make sure not to miss it. And the news number three is that we have a Russian senator, Valentina Matvienka, who is now speaking about peace talks. In the past, she was very aggressive in her narrative against Ukraine, and now look what happened. If you want to support my work and unlock some benefits, please consider becoming my channel member. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, and you can see all the other useful links to my right. Thank you so much for your attention, товарищи, and see you tomorrow during a special episode.